Ah, Marvel's Phase 5, a phase still in the midst of ushing out the old with the new, replacing the dark ages of Marvel's Phases 1 through 3 and correcting on their past mistakes of quality filmmaking. After Avengers Endgame, the studios knew it. Something was off, and something must be done. And luckily for us, our GOAT, our savior, Kevin Feige, was on the case. Marvel's Phase 4 was nothing less than a triumph, a true success in the eyes of Hollywood. With Disney showcasing to us, the audience, all of the talented writers that Marvel has at their disposal, displaying movie after movie, show after show, their seemingly unlimited range of terrible character writing. And while the box office might not have reflected the new, innovative, inclusive, and simply superior Marvel formula, with only one out of seven of those quality over quantity films to reach the staple mark of a billion dollars, the message has been received loud and clear. The Dark Ages are no more. Gone are the days of storytelling. Gone are the days of world building. Gone are the days of a connected universe. And gone are the days of character building. And while the old, bigoted, and simply terrible fans that propelled Marvel to an over 50% hit rate, yes, you heard me right, 6 out of 11 films in Marvel's Phase 3 now hit that now known unnecessary mark of over a billion dollars. No, we are no longer needed. In fact, we are no longer wanted. But I stayed anyway, knowing that I was not needed, knowing that I was not wanted. The MCU, the golden era, could not keep a super fan like me away. And so I continued the journey into Marvel's Phase 5. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, starring our normal, average, down-to-earth, family man and funny man. No, not that guy. Nope, not that guy either. All right, come on now, guys. He's dead. There we go. But with an Ant-Man, there must also be an ant daughter and an ant wife, also known as not an ant, but a wasp. Watch the ant family as the trio fights our biggest foe, the most dangerous man introduced in the MCU, Kang the Conqueror. A character that is destined to be on our big screens for years to come, captivating our minds with his philosophies and battling our heroes of old and new, with the particular Avengers movie rounding it all out in a glorious conclusion. <coughs> <coughs> Watch the Ant Family as our trio fights our biggest foe, the most dangerous man introduced in the MCU, Kang the Conqueror, a character that will now die at the end of the movie to our newly introduced main characters, artificially intelligent ants that got absolutely no screen time, no dialogue, seeing how they are ants, and some could even say our new Avengers. With Kang never to be seen again, mocked by his fellow variants, and with his character conclusion ending in a court case. But never fear my fellow Marvel superfan, while supporting character Ant Daughter taught me the lesson of looking on the bright side as to not, in her words, Don't be a dick! We must take this next movie with a grain of salt. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, for better and for mostly worse, was a return to form to the dark ages of the MCU. Welcome back. You were not missed. Say hello to Peter Quill in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Characters that we have now seen grow and develop from mere seedling form of the early days of the MCU. Just now spreading its buds to bloom into what is now known as the dark ages of the superhero genre. Nebula, Rocket Raccoon, Peter Quill, Gamora, from 2012. Characters where finally us, the audience, will be able to relish in the conclusion of their story and rethink and restructure our minds on the love of these characters. A heart-wrenching and heartwarming story about family and past trauma that can follow and mold the characters, the people, the aliens, and of course, 
yes, the animals that we grow into. It simply has no business in this day and age of the MCU. The High Evolutionary, a more improved Kang, absolute blasphemy. One of the coldest takes that I have ever heard from Marvel fans since Carol Danvers not being one of the most well-written characters in the entirety of the MCU. A cold and twisted villain, a villain with no moral code and motivations that stay true to his character, a villain with no lessons to learn from, not a singular bone of anti-hero in his body, a non-relatable character for a non-relatable movie. Adam Warlock, more like Adam Snorlock. A mommy's boy with the power of Superman is simply not interesting enough to captivate the minds of the new and improved Marvel fans. The story and tragedy of Rocket Raccoon, while yes, a sad, sad tale to the majority of human beings, I must ask Marvel, and yes, I do it for the sake of all of us. We're all thinking it. We all want to ask, where are the jokes? No, I am not here for a sad time. I am here for a funny time. Move aside character development, move aside world building, and move aside creative storytelling. As Bo Burnham once said, Goodbye, sadness. Hello, jokes. But with over half of 2023 left to go, and with only one fantastic and easily digestible movie with Ant Daughter in the realm of quantum mania hitting our big screens, the only question we are left to ask ourselves where do we go now? Back in the dark ages of Marvel's phases one through three, while there was always a plan, while there was always an end goal, while there was always a timeline that some might call too simple for the MCU nowadays, a wise man once said, perfection is something that can simply not be planned. And lucky for us, us the super fans of Marvel, even when you look over the horizon, a plan is nowhere to be found. The formula of quantity over quality is unfortunately starting to diminish. But our luck does not end there, my dear viewer. No, quite the opposite, in fact. With Disney's Marvel ready to strap up their boots yet again to go to war, Disney is now back, and better than ever, with Secret Invasion, starring the returning supporting character of Captain Marvel's Carol Danvers with the head of shield, the head of sword, the head of spear, the head of axe. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Got a little carried away. My point is, welcome back to the MCU, Nick Fury a character that has been out of the timeline since the dark ages of Captain America Winter Soldier, and a character that is in for a beautiful reawakening and reimagining of our new and improved characters of the old. Welcome back Maria Hill, or better known as Canucks loving and baby hating Robin Shabatsky from How I Met Your Mother. Welcome back man with the green face and the accent from time to time, Enjoy your time in the spotlight, for soon your replacements are also due for a new, a reimagined, and of course, improved replica of the same exact character. Loki Season 2, scheduled to be released on October the 6th, 2023, a sequel season to what some might call the greatest MCU Disney Plus show that they have ever witnessed. Welcome back, Loki, from 2012. Watch Loki as we follow his journey into becoming the same exact Loki that we were privy to watching through the Dark Ages. But no, what I am talking about now, he is no longer the star of his show. This is no longer called Loki, from 2012. Much like the reckoning that Nick Fury has been avoiding since Captain America Winter Soldier, a much more new innovative and superior Loki has been thrown into the mix. Of course, I'm talking about Sylvie, the Loki variant that just so happens to have boobs. The question is, will the sequel season hold up to its predecessor or fall flat on its face due to the astronomical expectations of perfection? But in all of that, 
rounding up the year of our spectacular Disney Plus shows, we have a fan favorite, a character that constantly overperforms and outsells her newly introduced, or maybe not, comic book runs in bunches. A character that I remember listening to bedtime stories about with my mom. A character that will surely have you taking off work for the weekend. A character that will have you canceling your future plans after this video. Hire a dog sitter, hire the babysitter, make your grocery run and grab your blankets. For you will surely be locked in the house all weekend long for a fantastic time of binge watching your new favorite series ever. If you haven't guessed it by now, of course, I'm talking about the main character in Marvel's Phase 4, Disney Plus's Hawkeye, Echo. Even if you don't know her real name, that's nothing that a brief Google search can't help you with. But for me, this has been a character I've championed for since the early stages of the Dark Ages. A character with the importance of an Iron Man, the importance of a Captain America, but with the strength, the courage, and the perfection of a Wanda. A mute character with a great and capable disabled actress who I mostly feel sorry for, for the source material that she has been given to work with. No human, no alien, no animal should be subjugated to this type of terrible character writing. But yes, she will be making her appearance on the small screen on November 29th, 2023, in a Marvel Disney Plus first, releasing all of her episodes at one time, because Marvel knows we as super fans simply cannot wait the agonizing week by week release schedule of Echo. Welcome to the cast, generic female warrior hero number 27. Your addition will truly make the MCU a brighter and better universe to enjoy. But last but not least, rounding out our year of three whole movies that we as Marvel fans can even ask for, the most glorious of them all, our Misa, our Khaleesi, our Queen, finally returns to the big screen after far too many years. We have the Marvels, and while some might think that that introduction was for Brie Larson, my plank, you are surely mistaken. No, no, this is the Marvels, while one strong female warrior hero was mold-breaking, earth-shattering, and even called brave for its time. Why not multiply that by three, said Kevin Feige. And for that logic, I raise you a beer, my good man. Yes, welcome back, fan favorite Kamala Khan as Miss Marvel, Plank as Plank, and Monica Rambeau as new, improved, and diverse Plank. Is that like a personal attack or something? Set aside, Carol Danvers. This is no longer a sequel to Captain Marvel. You have been hijacked. Hoodwinked. Had the floor taken from right under you. Move aside for Monica Rambeau, a character that allowed a psychopathic maniac to go free of her crimes of enslavement, to run ravaged through the multiverse, killing hundreds of people in her way, on the path of almost killing an Avenger, the Sorcerer Supreme, the Protector of Earth, a teenage child, all because she wants to be a mom. There has never in the history of the MCU been a character with more relatable goals and a more balanced and clear mind than Wanda. I support Monica's decision completely in the events of WandaVision, and yes, I accept her as our new lead for Marvel Studios, the Marvels. There is no need for a female of the paper skin variety to lead our mighty group of super female warrior heroes. No one with a greater moral code than Monica Rambeau. Congratulations, Miss Marvel. Kamala Khan are meeting your idol. I'm sure your new team will accept you with open arms. We're a team. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not a team. We're not a team. <sighs> <clears throat> I'm sure the audience will accept you with open arms, seeing how you will most likely be carrying the main load, the most important role of Marvel's phases four through five, the comedic relief. 
I hope you can stand on your two feet, head held high, but the jokes will be plentiful. Pat yourselves on the back for this one, Marvel. You have once again ran your VFX artist absolutely into the ground with the beautiful display of green screens and eye-popping cosmic beings that will surely go down in the history books, or at least win you an Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> Just simply typing the script, the excitement, the anticipation, the direction itself is starting to become overwhelming for a super fan such as myself. I almost cannot take it. It's like an itch. June cannot come soon enough. And fall and winter 2023 is no longer the holiday season, the season of giving. It is the season of receiving, receiving gifts that we do not want but need. The season of Marvel Phase 5 is upon us. And in glorious fashion, I will always be here to receive next product. I want to thank everybody for watching the video. And if you are a Marvel super fan such as myself, or even a fan of the Dark Ages, I still ask that you give a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Eventually, we all must form common ground. Us super fans and us non-super fans alike, for the MCU is truly and undoubtedly the pinnacle of cinema itself. With this long hiatus of Marvel products, I will leave in the comments below my ranking of all of the MCU phases four and five films, as well as the Disney Plus TV shows, and I would ask that you all do the same as well. While they all can't be number one, they can all surely still be perfection. Again, I want to thank you all for watching the video. And well, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.